Affinity version 2.2 has just been released, and in this video, I'm going to show you the biggest changes that you should know about. Let's get started. The first major change is to keyboard shortcuts. In version 2.2, we can now temporarily access a tool by holding down its keyboard shortcut. As an example, let's say that I have the paintbrush out and I'm working on a beautiful painting in Affinity Photo. But at some point, I want to erase something that I painted. Now, normally, I would press the E key on my keyboard to get out the eraser tool. But in version 2.2, I can hold down the E key to temporarily switch to the eraser tool. As long as I hold down the E key, I'll keep the eraser tool out. But the moment I release the E key, I'll immediately jump back into the paintbrush tool. Then I can continue painting without needing to press the keyboard shortcut B to get out the paintbrush again. If you use a lot of keyboard shortcuts, then I'm sure you'll appreciate this new update. The next biggest change is the Move and Duplicate dialog box. To use this feature, have any shape, text box, or image selected with the Move tool. Then, press the Enter key on your keyboard. From here, we can move and duplicate the object we have selected. For example, I can easily move this heart 500 pixels to the right. And in addition to moving things, we can also duplicate them at the same time. I'll press Enter to bring back the dialog box, and once again I'll enter 500 into the horizontal field. But this time, I'll also turn on Duplicate, and then I'll set it to make two duplicate copies. Now when I press OK, two new hearts are created, and each heart is moved 500 pixels to the right. And with this tool, you can even have multiple layers selected. So if I click and drag to select all of these hearts, then I can press Enter to bring back the dialog box again. But this time, I'll move them vertically by 500 pixels. I'll also make two duplicate copies, just like last time. And just like that, we duplicated all three hearts. This is a really fun feature, and I'm sure you'll enjoy playing around with it. The next big change is the Object Creation dialog box. To use this feature, have any shape tool selected, and then hold down Command or Control on your keyboard. Then, when you click in your document, the Object Creation dialog box will open. From here, we can enter an exact size for our shape, and it will be placed precisely where we clicked. Now I'll get out the ellipse tool so that we can try this new feature while making some circles. I'll hold down Command or Control, and I'll click on one of the corners of the square. Then I'll make a circle that's exactly 300 by 300 pixels. I'll also add circles to the other corners. And to speed things up, I can click anywhere in the document to confirm the creation of each circle instead of clicking the OK button over and over. The new object creation feature is a great way to add precise shapes anywhere in your design. The last major change in version 2.2 is the ability to change the color of your guides. To see this change, let's first make some guides. You can press Command or Control R to bring up the ruler, and then with the Move tool, you can click and drag on the rulers to make guides. Now if we double click on one of the guides, we'll open the Guides Manager. Everything we've done so far is the same in the previous versions of Affinity, but now in version 2.2, we can come down here to change the color of our guides. This can help you to see your guides more easily, especially if your document has a blue background color. So those are my favorite changes in Affinity 2.2. Let me know in the comments which of these updates you're most excited about, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.